Will the House come to order? Members, before this voice vote, are there any other members wishing to submit written testimony? Representative Lowen. Thank you. Uh, in opposition, permission Oppos to insert written comments. Please. So ordered. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Representative, Representative Oshiro. Permission to submit written comments, please. So ordered. Thank you. Further, members, Representative Ng. Uh, in opposition, with permission to insert written comments. So ordered. Thank you very much. You. Any further requests for submission of written comments? In support or in opposition. Thank you, members. If there are no other requests, we're going to go to a voice vote. Members, if you vote aye, I'm sorry, members, it, by voting aye, you are in favor of the floor amendment. If you vote no, you are in opposition of the floor amendment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed, say no. The floor amendment has failed. Representative Ward. Mr. Speaker, I have a third and final amendment, please. Thank you, Representative. Mr. Clerk, have copies of floor amendment number 17 been distributed to the members? Yes, Mr. Speaker, copies of floor amendment number 17 have been distributed. Thank you very much. Representative Ward for the motion. Mr. Speaker, I move for the Church Protection Act amendment. Thank you. Amendment number 17. Thank you, Representative McDermott. Second. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the proposed, proposed floor amendment number 17? Representative Ward. Thank you, Speaker. I rise uh, in support of this measure for a couple of reasons. In support of the amendment, please in proceed. In support of the amendment. First is because of the lack of clarity that our chief legal officer, uh, the uh, AG, Mr. Louie, it was where we are very much protected by this particular bill. Then, on the other hand, we're not protected by the bill. The same with uh, Mr. Hoshijo. We are very much protected, but we're not protected. And because of those ambiguities, I thought, let's lock this down. Let's carve out the churches from the Public Accommodations Act. And that's exactly what this amendment does. It sets aside and says, off limits, you churches, you go about doing what you're going to do. Because what we've got now, Mr. Speaker, is if you're going to do a baptism, a burial, a counseling, a basketball game, or whatever, you're not going to be able to be protected. It says only in marriages, solemnization, and in celebration. And every time I bring this up, people say, well, that's covered under the First Amendment. Well, duh, this whole thing is under the First Amendment, but we're carving it out and not being specific enough. So this amendment is saying, let's be very clear on what we're saying. Let's mean what we say, say what we mean. Carve out the churches, let them carry on with their First Amendment rights by protecting them, by opting them out, i.e. carving them out of the public accommodations law. That's all this amendment does, Speaker. Let there be peace in the religious community, in the LGBT community, and let them carry on as members of our ohana. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Further discussion? Representative Oshiro. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak against this floor amendment. In opposition, please proceed. Yeah, on page 22, I, I think that's where the language is. Public accommodations do not include the real property, buildings, or other areas owned or leased by a religious organization and regularly used for religious purposes, notwithstanding whether the religious organization permits the community to also use some or all of this real property, building, or other areas owned or leased by a religious organization. I think, I think, I know the intention is of the author and the proposer of this floor amendment, but I think uh, this goes to the other extreme now, Mr. Speaker. This goes to the other extreme by uh, having the religious organizations having uh, no, um, no uh, oversight and into going into what might be considered a, a public accommodation um, under our current civil rights uh, laws and the public accommodations uh, law administered by the um, Civil Rights Commission. So I think that's where I have some problems with it. Um, if I reference the um, jurisdiction of it right now, and I go to the um, the outline that was given by us to the to the body by the uh, executive director, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission, October 17, 2013, he talks about a, an analysis uh, methodology. The first question is: Is this a place of public accommodation? The religious facility is being offered for public use, and he looks at it as a fact-based, case-by-case determination. And I think. What you would have here, if you had this language in place of uh, the current language, you have a analysis and maybe balancing of uh, competing or seemingly competing uh, constitutional issues. 
um, you would tend to maybe go over on one side, which would be to, in this case, um, start and end with public accommodations not being even covered under this section. It's similar to what would be like a private club right now, whether it's the uh, Kiwanis Club or Elks Club or Pacific Club or Riga Canoe Club, a uh, members kind of organization that uh, is not covered under the public accommodations law. But I think most religious institution organizations operate in the public domain. Uh, they want to have that public uh, intercourse of people coming in and out uh, with not only members but uh, non-members. Uh, they want to open their doors to those who they might be able to convert or expose to their way of thinking, uh, the, their practices, their precepts. So I think uh, this this tr tries to address the situation, but again, I think it goes a little bit a uh, little bit too far on, on that sense, Mr. Speaker. So that's where I have my concerns. I think we need to get back to, you know, what we're trying to do here is to reconcile the competing interests of religious freedom uh, within the institution, within the physical plant of the religious organization, uh, with the same thing about the due process, equal protection rights of those who might want to enter or use those facilities in the domain of uh, making sure that our constitutional rights of uh, a protection uh, of civil rights, regardless of one's sex or, or race, uh, gender orientation, um, religion, and uh, um, ancestry is protected. So I think this goes a little bit too far, and for that reason, I'll be objecting to it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Further discussion, members? Representative Har. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In opposition to the floor amendment. Opposition, please proceed. Mr. Speaker, um, first of all, may I please have the words of the speaker from Wahiwa entered into the journals if they were my own. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Secondly, you know, I think, you know, what this floor amendment does or is attempting to do really does, in fact, highlight the issues with the underlying measure. Again, what we are attempting to do is balance 14th Amendment equal protection versus First Amendment guarantees. And that's really the crux of this issue, Mr. Speaker, and why we are debating this. Because at the end of the day, they are both interests that must be equally weighed. And so while I certainly understand the uh, introducer's intent, but I think what it really does is underscore and highlight the fact that the underlying measure does not, in fact, uh, it doesn't achieve the objective of balancing those 14th Amendment and First Amendment rights. And that's why we're in this predicament right now. We understand. I, in fact, received an email from a woman who is a wedding photographer. She said she's already being targeted because she was in opposition to Senate Bill 1. Her business is already being targeted. We're already starting to see it now, Mr. Speaker. And so, again... As our job as legislators, our job is to ensure that everything that we craft is responsible and that we take everything into consideration. We balance. That's our job. And I would submit, Mr. Speaker, that if any law that we pass goes before the judiciary for judicial review and, in fact, is overturned, I would submit, Mr. Speaker, that we have failed as legislators because we did not perform our due diligence so I've urged other members of this body that we have to take pause and look at what are we doing right now. And so I very much respect some of the comments about Chapter 489. The fact of the matter is it does create conflict. And so I think that this floor amendment, again, continues to underscore the deficiencies in Senate Bill 1 and why we continue to have these issues now and moving forward should this bill pass as is. For those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I am in opposition to the floor amendment. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Representative. Representative Nishimoto, I call for the question. The question has been called. Members, if you are in support or opposition and would like to submit written comments, please let the chair know now before we take the voice vote. Members, okay. We are going to head to the voice vote. This is on floor amendment number 17. Members, <laughs> members um, who vote aye, you, you will indicate that has indi the indication that you are in support of the floor amendment. Members, if you vote no, you are in opposition of the floor amendment. Okay. Boys, vote. All those in favor for the floor amendment number 17 signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The floor amendment has failed. Members, recess. Subject to the call of the chair. Recess. Majority members, Bubba Caucus at 145 in the caucus room. 145 in the caucus room. Thank you.